Hi, I'm Courtney Fingar, editor of FDI Magazine. I'm reporting in live from the International Monetary Fund World Bank Annual Meetings in Washington, D.C. I'm joined here by the newly appointed Finance Minister of Peru, and we'll be looking to find out from him what changes investors might expect from the new government and how this strong performing economy is looking to build for future growth. Well, Peru's had quite a growth story in recent years, um, both for the economic growth but also in attracting foreign investment, one of the stars of a growing region. Um, what is the basis of that, in your opinion? I think uh, the basis for, for the, the growth has been uh, really um, three, three, th three things. Uh, primarily keeping a very stable environment uh, macroeconomically, um, we have very sound policies in the monetary and the fiscal front, which actually enabled us to be upgrading our investment uh, rating. Um, in the midst of the current crisis, we were just currently upgraded uh, by Standard & Poor's. And we're only second to, 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 to Chile and, and uh, the same level as Mexico. So uh, that's uh, very important. And it, was, it precisely came um, during the first few weeks of this new administration. So I think that's one thing. The other thing is, is uh, there's been um, a clear bet in terms of uh, inserting our economy into the global market. Mm -hmm. Both uh, uh, we've signed um, um, many trade agreements uh, with our main trading partners, uh, China, European Union, the US, Canada, Japan, South Korea. And that gives a platform really for not only to promote trade, but investment which is um, very important. And the third has been a, a very uh, friendly environment for investment. Actually, uh, we've uh, 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 been able to reduce um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the red tape and ease um, uh, uh, having doing business with Peru. And the IFC's uh, doing business um, um, uh, ranking uh, last year, Peru was among the top 10 reformers in the world, and we've made strides. We're only, uh, I think, in second place to, uh, I think it's Mexico or some other country, in terms of the ease of doing business. So I'd say macroeconomic stability, um, uh, a clear bet to insert ourselves in international markets, both trade and capital, and, uh, and uh, an environment that is friendly to um, investment. And I think within this environment, uh, the respect of the tree of the contracts that we've signed uh, is critical. Um, so it's a combination of those factors, I think, that explain part of the good performance that Peru has posted over the years. And what can we expect from your new administration of which you were a part in terms of the business environment? Do you plan to make any reforms or can we expect more of the same? No. I think uh, we definitely need to tackle some challenges that are still pending. But we need to build upon the good things. And I think uh, uh, Peru has had a very dynamic growth rate. Uh, we are, we're among the uh, few countries that have been growing close to 8% uh, uh, on sustained growth uh, at Asian level growth rates, mm -hmm. like the Chinese and the Indians and the Vietnamese. And when I keep that, those, th that growth rate uh, as dynamic as before, basically the main changes ha have to do with how well distributed those, that growth uh, is and what we've seen is that uh, growth has led to a poverty reduction. Important poverty reduction it used to be 50 percent a few years ago. Nowadays, a poverty rate is 30 percent. But if you dig dig deeper into the numbers, you're going to see that there's uh, a lot of uh, gaps still pending between rural and urban areas. The uh, the rural uh, poverty rate is double the national poverty rate. And there's uh, 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 still a lot of uh, uh, gaps, of access to basic services of electricity, water, sewage, roads, primarily in rural areas. So that's uh, one of the main um, um, one of the main areas where we're going to be working on. And and another area is uh, increasing the presence of the state, where it's been absent over the years to provide services for the for the population, especially for the poor areas. But that has to be done effectively. Mm -hmm. It's not only a question of just giving out money, but just uh, making sure that uh, if, we s were, uh, if we were to invest, uh, that investment leads to better results. An example of that is that we are working on results-based budgeting. And, uh, and uh, on the one hand, and we're trying to be working together closer with local and regional governments 
that are responsible for over 50% of public investment in the country. So I think uh, there are many, uh, uh, many ways to uh, improve uh, upon what we've achieved already and, uh, and give more social cohesion to our country. So we're, we're working on those, those and other issues. Have you set any targets for how much foreign direct investment you'd like to attract? Um, we, we have uh, uh, an inventory of investment, uh, and I think investment over the next uh, five years can uh, multiply by 10. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, That's uh, quite ambitious. Well, we have a pipeline of already identified projects mm -hmm. that uh, in different sectors, mining being the, the main one. Um, that we can go and, and jump our, our FDI from 7 billion or over 7 billion to 70 billion mm -hmm. over, the, over the next few years. And it's investment that's coming from, uh, from uh, China, from Canada, from the, the US, and, and, and very importantly, uh, investment coming within Latin America. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, it, it's important, the mining investment is very important because uh, uh, mining uh, has uh, lots of potential to, to be, uh, you know, to be, uh, it's an area of vast potential. Peru is the second largest producer of, of copper in the world, of, of silver, uh, uh, of gold, we're the fifth. So there's uh, plenty of, of room to, to, to tap those resources. Uh, we just uh, uh, were able to uh, strike a, a, a balance, you know, to uh, make a royalties uh, regime uh, for the mining sector more efficient, and and that would uh, lead to more investment investment projects in that sector. But we also need to work in other areas, such as easing license uh, license provision, permit provision, and making sure that the conflicts that sometimes evolve between the extractive industry. And, and the community get solved. Uh, an important law was put, put was uh, uh, approved recently. It's a consultation um, um, law that uh, all ex extractive projects uh, need to have a, a consensus with this with the local community. But but it's it's not minding. It's just to make sure that uh, 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 there's a, a clear understanding of what are the concerns of the local communities, both socially and environmentally. So I think this is a, 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 a step towards uh, uh, making a more um, um, you know, legitimate that investment and for the benefits to be more broadly uh, you know, based and, uh, and felt by the population, not only in the area of influence of the project, but within, mm -hmm. beyond that. What other priority sectors do you have? Because presumably you don't want to be overly reliant on the mining industries. What else do you think that Peru can I have think success in? I think uh, we, we have an uh, uh, in, in infrastructure. Uh, we have uh, still a, a large gap to be met, mm -hmm. uh, about close to 40 billion in, in transportation, electricity, uh, water. Um, another sector um, is retail, which I, I think it's, it's um, there are many in interesting projects there. Uh, our banking system is still quite, it's still, um, you know, very small. Uh, it's 25% of GDP in comparison to Chile, which is uh, close to 100% of GDP. Mm -hmm. So I think for a level of income, we still have uh, uh, ways to catch up. And, uh, and I think inv investments uh, will be broadly based, diversified. I, I think 50% would be in natural resource based um, uh, sectors and the rest in other sectors. I think also um, um, the petrochemical sector is important. Uh, 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 it, it, it is, is important uh, also using um, our gas endowments, mm -hmm. natural gas endowments. Uh, to develop um, our, uh, um, you know, uh, different uh, industries. And in the mining, try to strive to add value. Mm -hmm. For instance, looking into developing services mm -hmm. uh, uh, related to the mining. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is to diversify, but, but to take uh, advantage of our endowments. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we're doing. And, and also a, a, a market that uh, is in, in growth. Okay, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome.